Welcome to Our Own Voice, a partnership in mental health awareness in cooperation with NAMI Wichita and Kaysen Community Radio. NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. We are the largest grassroots advocacy network for people with mental illness and their family members, with over 800 national affiliates and 13 Kansas affiliates, with NAMI Wichita being one of those 13. We provide awareness, support, education, and advocacy for people affected by mental illness. Our purpose here is to provide a community conversation on KSUN Radio that gives insight into what it's like to live with a mental illness. Our intention and hope is that our program will change attitudes, assumptions, and stereotypes about people with mental health conditions, and in so doing, we will stop the stigma associated with mental illness. My name is David. I'm very pleased and proud to be your host today, and I am a person living with mental illness. I'm in recovery for major depressive disorder. Like everyone, I struggle with the ups and downs of emotions and the challenges of being fully human, but I am doing great, and I know I have many gifts to offer my family, my friends, and my community. Now, before I get too far into the program, I need to note that we talk about mental health issues on this program. There may be some issues or words that may be troubling or triggering for our listeners. Please practice good self-care and use your own discretion when listening. Now, let me introduce Kara, my co-host and the executive producer for our program. Hello, Kara. Hello, David. And our technical producer is Maddie. Hello, Maddie. Hello. And now for me to introduce our guest today, it is my pleasure to introduce Carrie. Hello, Hi. Carrie. How are you? Doing great. Good. And so we have Kara and Carrie. And so hopefully I don't get things mixed up. I will point to whoever I'm talking to. We, so um, We're two different people. That's true. You are. <laughs> so, but knowing how my brain operates, it's no telling what's going to happen. So... Let me begin, Carrie, with our conversation on the question that I ask everyone, and that is, where were you born and where did you grow up? I was born in Seneca, Kansas. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, no memory of that. I was young. Moved to Augusta when I was three, I believe. Okay. And grew up in Augusta. All right. And where did you graduate from high school and what was their mascot? Augusta High School and mascot was an Oriole. An Oriole? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, what were the colors? Black and orange. Black and orange. Go okay. Orange. Awesome. All right. So for, from, for um, anyone who is in Augusta, a shout out. Woohoo. All right. <laughs> um, so let me ask you now uh, another question, and that is, what is your diagnosis or diagnoses? Um, anxiety and depression. Okay. Um, those are the main, I mean, I have um, eating disorder issues in the past um, and ADD. Okay. All right. And when were you diagnosed with the anxiety and the depression? Um, diagnosed, I would say maybe at 19. Okay. All right. When I was actually diagnosed. All right. And um, what about when were you diagnosed with the ADD and and ADD? Not till I was probably thirty. Really? Yes. Okay. And what about the eating disorder? Eating disorder diagnosed probably. Um, I would say twenty-seven. Okay. I mean, I obviously had it growing up, um, right. but not diagnosed until I was twenty-seven, where I was actually in group therapy and. Um, individual therapy. Okay. All right. Well, um, let's see. What other questions can I ask you here? Um, have you encountered NAMI? Do you know who NAMI is? No. All right. I so, know through Kara's um, Facebook post and such. Uh huh. You know, um, that's kind of where I've heard about it. Okay. So, so you're a newbie to NAMI. Yes, I am a newbie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, we. Uh, we try to have, well, we, we have a wide variance of people that attend um, the, the various groups that we have. We have educational groups. We have support groups. Um, the, um, uh, the wide people that attend are anywhere from people who have a lived experience with mental illness to their family and friends, as well as even providers. We have um, uh, police officers 
Um, we have some doctors, uh, some lawyers, professional people. So it's it's a wide group of people. Yeah. It's a varied, a varied yes. group of yes. wonderful individuals. Yes, and they're all seeking uh, to take the stigma away. Yeah. So, um, can I ask? You bet. Um, I'd, I'd I'd like you to talk to our listeners about what it's like for someone living with ADD. What is ADD, and what is it for you? Yeah, I think it varies from person to person. Obviously, I think that's why I wasn't diagnosed at a young age. Um, I always did well in school. Um, it was more the talking, <laughs> you know, extra social. Um, as I got older, it developed into, I think the anxiety kind of took over to where I wasn't wanting to go to class, you know, when I was in college and stuff. And then the depression kind of hit. And so... I can see why I wasn't necessarily diagnosed. I mean, the qual the qualifiers change might change over time. Right. I know in in the DSM four versus the DSM five, there are many qualifiers that have um, changed for certain diagnoses. And of course, not every person is going mm -hmm. to have those same qualifiers. Exactly. Well, and I found that it kind of blurs in with other things you know you can't decide if it's okay so is this anxiety is this depression or right. you know yeah. so it kind of gets lost sometimes yeah it does and the 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 thing the thing well the the thing to remember is that each person is unique right. and so therefore how all these things affect each person mm -hmm. is going to be unique right um now i want to actually double back for a little bit uh Kara, can you tell us what the DSM-5 is? The, I, I don't know if I'm going to say this right. The Diagnostic Statistic Manual. I, I hope I didn't butcher that. Um, you it, did great. It, it's the manual that psychologists use. It's the psychologist handbook um, for diagnoses, um, for diagnosing individuals with certain mental um disorders right okay and um and now i want to double back on what carrie was saying um uh i know that anxiety and depression tend to go hand in hand mm -hmm. um oftentimes people will say well i first had anxiety and then i got depression or i first had depression and then i got anxiety right. and and that tends to happen a lot but uh new studies are showing that add tends to lead to the um, to these things as well I can so understand. so yeah you're you're right on target there mm -hmm. with with what you were feeling and right. what you were experiencing i think too like later in life for me um the more things i had thrown at me i couldn't put them in i couldn't file them away like as a child growing up your parents you know give you a little more structure Mm -hmm. And as you are an adult, you kind of go into your own way. And I'm a little bit of an artist and kind of just fly by the seat of my pants. And I didn't have that structure set up for myself. I wanted to be free, free of all that. And mm -hmm. right. it just really, I struggle with that, trying yeah. to put things in folders. And I think you've done w well for yourself. You, Thank you. You have a business. Yes, I do. Yes, congratulations on that. Thank you. That that shows that shows people that um, that uh, people with a lived experience still can rise above their lived experience, and that the lived experience doesn't define a person. Correct. It is just part of the person, and it can be a minor part for that matter. Right. And they rise above it. So yes. awesome. Thank you, Carrie. Would you like to talk about your business? Um, it's an old town. It's called the Wishbone, and it's a beauty parlor for daydreamers. Um, it's my third salon I've had open before, and I mean, like you were saying, I mean, life takes twists and turns and ups and downs, and it's getting back up on your feet. And so, um, I wouldn't say any of my businesses weren't there because of mental illness it was kind of a change or having children things as such but okay. I've definitely had struggles and battles off and on so fair enough well can, can I talk about your family 
Sure. Um, uh, you have you have children, you say? Yes. Wonderful. Give a shout out to them. Just their first names? Tegan and Drake. Tegan and Drake. Wonderful names. Yes. Fantastic. Hello there. So, um, uh, let's see. Do you have any pets? No pets. No pets. I've had pets, but you, no pets. That's okay. an extra thing I have to take care of. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no pets. Okay. Um, what about, uh, what are some of your hobbies? Or do you have time for a hobby since you have a business? Hobbies, um, art, most definitely. Okay. I love thrift storing, garage sales. Okay. Awesome. Yes. So, do you like to repurpose things then? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, in, in doing art, um, what area of art do you like? Do you like coloring, pencils? I do a uh, lot of mixed media. Mixed media. It just media. depends on okay. the day. Painting or um, I do drawing. Okay. More painting, though. That is awesome. So... Um, I, my, 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 uh, second oldest brother was a painter and I could never get the, the gist of it. Mm -hmm. It just didn't work for me, but yeah, I, I, I bow to you because that is some awesome ability. Thank you. So let's see. I do want to note, oh, I still have plenty of time. Um, let's see. So, uh, what are some of your coping skills for dealing with the depression? Um, therapy. <laughs> therapy, okay. Yes. Um, therapy, my biggest thing is using truth statements to kind of bring me back into the moment. Excellent. I find that it gets worse when I start, it's probably the ADD, but I start just, all this stuff starts piling on me. Things I have to do that have to be done, and they're days away, and I'm not living in the actual present moment. So, truth statements, um, grounding myself by being outside, outdoors, and being around people that lift me up okay excellent mm -hmm. well i am going to bring us close uh, coming to a close for our first segment here i want to note our own voice is intended to humanize the misunderstood highly stigmatized topic of mental illness by showing that it's possible and common to live well with a mental health condition so this is our own voice on case and community radio we are talking with carrie we are going to take a quick break and be right back our Own Voice is brought to you by NAMI. If you would like to learn more about the National Alliance on Mental Illness, the programs we offer, or get involved, please visit NAMI.org. Welcome back to Our Own Voice, a partnership in mental health awareness in cooperation with NAMI Wichita and K-Sun Community Radio. NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. To learn more about NAMI Wichita and how you can get involved with the mental health community, contact our message line at 316-686-1373 or email us at info at namiwichita.org. Leave a message and someone will get back to you as soon as possible. You can also visit our web and Facebook pages. Our website is www.namiwichita.org and our Facebook is facebook.com slash namiwichitaks. NAMI has a lot of activities going on from various classes to meetings. The first Tuesday of the month is our affiliate education meeting at 7 p.m., where we often have amazing guest speakers share with us happenings in mental health. On the third Tuesday of the month, we have Ask the Doctor Hour from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., followed by our support groups for those family and persons with a lived experience with mental health. And on the fourth Tuesday, we meet at College Hill United Methodist Church for a Care and Share support group for those persons and family and friends of those living with mental illness. The first and third Tuesday, our meetings are at 1010 North Main, the same location as Breakthrough Club and Episcopal Social Services. Again, if you would like to join us or learn more about NAMI Wichita, 
please contact our message line at 316-686-1373. We would love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you, Kara. And I want to note, uh, let me note again at least, that we talk about mental health issues on this program. There may be some issues that have words or uh, phrases that may be troubling or triggering. And so please practice good self-care when you are listening and listen at your own risk, at your own discretion, that is. Um, Now, uh, we were talking during the break, Carrie, about your various diagnoses. Mm -hmm. And uh, the question was asked by Kara that... um, it, what is the difference between ADD, which is what you have, and ADHD? And uh, for our listeners, ADD is attention deficit disorder, and ADHD is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So do you know the difference? That I do not. Okay. <laughs> so, On, to be honest with you, I think I've, I've heard doctors say both to me. Okay, so so sometimes they may use them interchangeably then. Correct. Okay. For me, they have. I don't know about others, but... But now you are on medication for ADD, yes. right? Mm-hmm. And you're also on medication for depression? Right, which and, also treats my anxiety. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and But you also do therapy. I do do therapy. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, which I want to point out to the listeners, that has been shown to be the best way to uh to rise above all this is to have both medication and therapy yes therapy and medication yes Yes. um people can get by without medication um very seldom do people get by with just medication and no therapy right um they it usually it's it's both and or just the therapy but therapy is so very important i think once you find the right therapist too yes i mean I think a lot of people go to a therapist and it's not the right fit and mm-hmm. they just want to give up when maybe just finding the right therapist for them. I know I've had that in the past where I'm like, Oh, I don't want to go to that therapist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, what, what words of hope do you find within your own life that you could share with our listeners concerning um, what you face and, and how you deal with it? It, um, may, that may have been it's a, not a, forever. Okay. That's a good, that's a good, that's word. what I have to tell myself. Um, you're not going to feel like this forever. Mm-hmm. So think positive thoughts. I mean, I, and I hate saying that, like in the moment you don't want to do that. It's like the last thing you want to do, but it truly does work. It really does. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and, and I want to point that out. I, I know I've, I've been practicing, uh, 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 I, I don't know whether to call it a trick or something, but um, a friend of mine uh, posted on Facebook a while back. Actually, it was last year, I think, um, and uh, cha- made a challenge for everyone to do 31 days of gratitude at the beginning of the yeah. year. Well, because of that, I have now been doing three points of gratitude, and I started before the year. Uh, before uh, 2019 was up, and I've tried to carry it on into t- uh, 2020, mm-hmm. and um, and gratitude has an amazing effect. Yes, it um, it really does. So uh, positive thoughts, uh, gratitude. What are some other things that that we can underscore? I think journaling. Journaling, yes. I know, like you were talking about earlier, it is a bit of ups and downs. And sometimes I think you forget when you're down that it is going to go back up. And it's nice to know when you're journaling to see how far you've come mm-hmm. and that, yeah, things can get better. Definitely. So um, I now I, I will confess that I am a poor journaler. I, I don't journal very well. I, um, uh, in fact, I, I pulled a journal down the other day and I realized that I haven't written in that journal since um, it was about 2017 mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's hey that's okay right that, that's something <laughs> yes. you know and and that and I've noticed that within my journals there, there are times where I'll say I haven't journaled here for a while but here's mm-hmm. a new entry right. so and that's okay too yeah yeah so and 
have you found to be careful when you go back and read them as well? Yes. Because that can trigger you sometimes. I have to be. It, 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 it can, but at the same time, it's, it's good to go back and review and say, hey, I'm actually doing so much better than yes. that. Yes. And pat yourself on the back. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Give yourself an uplift because you've, you've conquered over something there. Mm-hmm. So very true. So um, let's see, what else? Oh, I'm going to throw this one out at you, and I know that it, it may be a stumper, so okay. bear with me. Okay. But do you have a hero or heroine? That's a good question. Um, it's a loaded question. Yeah, <laughs> it can be. Um, I have a lot of people that I look up to. Okay. Depending on the circumstance I'm in at the time, who I can tap into and think, oh, gosh, you know, my art teacher was – so great and you know led me in the right direction okay and yeah yeah that's good so who else um clients okay that's good mm-hmm. uh-huh i can tap into them and experiences they've had and overcome you know so excellent okay well um Let's see, what else do we want to do here? Um, Carrie, you were talking uh, about um, coping skills before the break. Yes. Are, are there any other coping skills that you have? Like maybe on a day off, you, um, like we were talking about pedicures too. Yes. Um, I mean, the obvious one, I say obvious, but some of us don't do it all the time. I know I don't. It's exercise. Yeah. It's one of those things, too, where you dread it, but you know once you're done walking for 20 minutes or something, how much better you feel. Yeah. Um, And I would say just if you need quiet time or downtime, then take it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that that tends to be an issue, I think, with with those of us in in the United States. Mm -hmm. We we tend to get a guilty feeling when we take time for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we forget how important it is that me time, me time is me time. It's it's something that's needed. Yes. Um, So, yeah. That's one of my biggest ones. I find that if I'm over committing to things, and giving too much of myself, I'm zapped. Yeah. Right. Fair so. enough. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have a faith journey that you that you practice? Um, I go to church. Okay. Um, or have been going to church. I grew up in the church. Okay. Um, I've always I've always had a deep faith, whether okay. I, I'm at church or not. So has that helped you in in tremendously, rising above? tremendously. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, let's see, what else can we, can we throw at you? Um, don't throw too much at her. Okay. I'll try not to. (laughs) Um, I, the other thing uh for myself is, I don't know about you guys. I'm a big empath. Oh yeah. Being sensitive to other people. Yeah. And there's, there's beauty in that, but I've had to really balance that out because I tend to take other people's things in and then worry about them constantly or it just there's a fine line you know and I guess that goes into self-care yeah so yeah and and boundaries yes making, boundaries. making space for boundaries and saying okay need to walk away right. and you're not a bad person if you do it's not that you don't care right it's that you need to be healthy yes so and there's only so much you can do yeah i feel like there's a fine line for everything Mm -hmm. there's a a very distinct balance for everything um sorry i'm on the switchboard right now and i am having trouble (laughs) turning around a little bit but um there's a balance for being there for people and being there for yourself and very true it's a juggle Yes, it is. And, and, um, I know, I know within my faith, I got to the point that I felt, I felt guilty for taking time for myself. Mm -hmm. And I I don't think faith was meant to be that way for you. And so it, it got to the, got to the point that I finally said, okay, um, 
divine being, give me the guidance here. And right. the guidance was take time for yourself, you know, be willing to, to, um, be willing to take care of yourself. Yes. So, um, let's see, what else can we do here? Is there anything you'd like to talk about? Yeah. Here? I think that if you're in a bad place to reach out. Yes. And to realize that you're not alone. Um, I know people hear that all the time, but when you're in the depths, sometimes it's hard to reach out. Yeah. And people do care. Yeah. And, and you know, reach out and try to find someone. Yes. Um, yeah. So um, I'm going to gr draw us to a close now. So... Thank you for joining us for our own voice on Case and Community Radio. Uh, thank you to Carrie thank for you. talking with us about mental health issues. And join us for our next Our Own Voice program. <laughs>